Hi, this is Kevin from the Math Source, and we're going to do a bit of GCSE math today, and I want to look at solving equations that have been factorised. Now, this usually comes up in the context of factorising quadratics, but what we're talking about today is actually just the solution part. Um, I was having a lesson with a student the other day, and I realised there's this kind of key idea underlying a lot of it, that once you really, once you understand it, it makes algebra and solving all sorts of equations, not just quadratics, uh, but we'll be able to do more complicated ones very easily, um, very simple too. So we're going to have a look at that in this video. So what I'm talking about is this, uh, where we've got an equation like uh, x minus 1 times x plus 2 equals 0. Now if you've learned a method for factorizing and quadratics, usually this might start out you know, in the multiplied out form, uh, x squared uh, here would be x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0, and there's a whole step in trying to factorize it and getting to the answer here. But I don't, and, and I've done that in other videos. Um, but what I really want to focus on is just what happens once you've already got it in factorized form, and why it, does that method work, right? So um, the logic that it's based on is this. If you have two numbers, uh, a and b, say, that multiply together to give 0, then it must be the case that either a is 0 or b is 0. Right? Um, you know, there's, and, and although this sounds like a, an easy thing to say, it's so important to understand. So for example, if I have 3 times 0, I get 0. If I have 0 times minus 5, I get 0. But if I have 3 times 6, that's not 0, that's 18, right? So it's, um, so why does this matter? Um, well, it's the heart of this whole factorizing method this argument only works for zero. So you often see people start with an equation like x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals zero, and they do something like this. They say x squared plus 4x equals 5, and I can see why you do that, because people have learned to get all the x's on one side, all the numbers on the other side, and then maybe they try to factorize this, and they try to make some argument about x times x plus 4 equals 5. This just doesn't work, because there's no nothing we can say particularly special about two numbers that multiply together to give 5, like there is about two numbers that multiply together to give 0. Okay. So the other thing to think about is uh, to remember what we're actually doing when we try to solve an equation. And uh, so if I've got the equation, let's just say, let's take the equation uh, x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0, what it means to solve the equation is to find the value of x that makes this uh, equation work, right? So, for example, if I put in x equals minus 1, then that means that minus 1 squared plus minus 1 minus 2, that gives me 1 minus 1 minus 2, uh, so that gives me minus 2, right? So that doesn't give me 0, so x equals minus 1 is not a solution to the equation. But if I take x equals plus 1, then 1 squared plus 1 minus 2 is 0, and that one is a solution to the equation. And the point here is, solutions to equations are much, much easier to spot once we're in this factored form, right? Because if I have instead here x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0 again, I can just see that much more easily, right? If I substitute in uh, x equals 1 here, it makes this bracket 0, right? x minus 1 is when x is 1 is 1 minus 1 which is 0 okay now x plus 2 then right would be 1 plus 2 which is 3 and then I get 3 times 0 equals 0 so the reason this factorized form is nice is that we can make this argument the other way around okay because a times b equals 0 implies that a is 0 or b equals 0 if I get to the point in an equation where I've got this, right? This is going to be my a, uh, the x minus two, the x plus two here, and this is going to be my b. Well, that means that either, uh, so, so that means I can say that either x plus two is zero, or x minus one equals zero, right? And x plus two is zero gives x equals minus two, and x minus one is zero gives x equals plus one. So, you see. A lot of people look at this and they just learn somehow that once you've got it in this factored form, you just take like minus the number here or plus the number here and learn a rule that's not based on the logic. Now, why is that a problem, right? I mean, you could just learn here that, okay, you change the plus to a minus and then that gives you the answer. But it's a problem because as soon as we start to do harder examples, this method uh, doesn't work as well, right? So imagine if I've got my factorized form and it's 2x plus 1 times 
3x minus 4 equals 0. Now a lot of students who've learnt the rule the wrong way will just say like, oh, maybe x is minus 1 or x is 4, they'll just start guessing. But based on this logic that a times b is 0 implies a is 0 or b is 0, this shouldn't be any harder than the first example, right? Because what we see now is that this means that either 2x plus 1 is 0 or 3x minus 4 equals 0, right? So I'm looking for a number that I can substitute into this equation to make 0, and in order to do that, I've just got to make one of the factors equal to 0. Right, and if you can solve linear equations, 2x plus 1 equals 0, that gives me 2x equals minus 1, or x equals minus a half, and then 3x minus 4 equals 0, so 3x equals 4, or x equals uh, 4 thirds. Right, so the solution to this equation is that x equals minus 1 half, or plus 4 thirds. So the factored form, combined with this bit of logic, is super useful. Right, now there's one other case that people always um, make mistakes on, and you know teachers find this frustrating and think, oh, this must be the easy uh, example. Um, but of course, students don't always find that. And that's when you've got something like this. If you have x times x plus 4 equals 0, right? Now, students who've just learned this method, you know, that says, that says uh, oh, I, I take that minus this number plus this number, look at this, and they say, oh, but this doesn't have the same form as the equation that I've looked at before. But of course it does, right? It's if, you, if you're thinking about it in the right way and you're thinking about trying to make one of the factors equal to zero, it has exactly the same form, right? So it's a times b equals zero, right? This time the a is the x and the b is the x plus four, right? So to solve this equation, I either get x equals zero or x plus four equals zero. And x plus four equals zero, of course, gives x equals minus four. So in some ways, this is like a special case of factorizing quadratics. Also, you know, when people see this in unfactorized uh, form, you often get a bit confused by it because they say, well, okay, how, you know, how do I, uh, how do I factorize this? You know, I know it's a quadratic, I'm looking for two brackets, uh, but I need two numbers that multiply together to give something that's not there, okay? Um, so, you know, th so the method seems to break down here, but of course, when you're factorizing, you know, the first thing you should look for before you do anything complicated is a common factor, and here there's a common factor uh, of x. Okay, I'm getting a little bit off uh, the point here. But I just wanted to raise that one as a particular example. Okay, and the other way you can think about this is you could also think about it as you know x plus zero times x plus four equals zero if you wanted to, and then you could say ah well that means that either you know if you like x equals minus zero and x equals minus four if you want to sort of make this match up to the to your uh, to, to to another method right. But it is a bit weird to write x as x plus zero, but it's technically true. Okay, right so. Now you see this method is really powerful because um, if you've thought about this in the right way, suddenly actually we can master even much more complicated um, factorizations, right? So if I've got something in this form, x plus 4 times 3x plus 2 times 5x minus 6 equals 0, well if you think about the logic, you know, it's what I said before about, you know, a times b is 0 implies a is 0 or b is 0, it's just as true when you've got 3 numbers, right? If I want to multiply three numbers together and get zero, one of them has to be zero. So either a is zero, or b is zero, or c is zero, right? If I do three times five times seven, uh, I get something that's not zero. But if I do three times five times zero, I get something that is zero. So as long as one of the things on the left is zero, um, then we get a solution to this equation. It's a number x that we substitute into the equation that makes that equation work. So I can now do cubics or higher order in fact, let's, let's, why don't we make this a quartic, right? So if I put an x in front of it as well, x times x plus 4 times 3x plus 2 times 5x minus 6 equals 0. Um, and in order to solve that equation, I've just got to look at all the four factors. So actually, again, this special case x shouldn't worry us now. It means that either x is 0 or uh, x plus 4 is 0. So that one gives us x equals minus 4. Or we can have 3x plus 2 is 0. And, you know, we're just repeatedly solving these easy linear equations, x equals minus 2 thirds or 5x minus 6 equals 0. So x equals 6 fifths, right? So I've got this much harder equation now, but if it's thought about in the right way, is actually really no harder than the quadratic case. So hope that was useful. I mean, other videos um, that you can find on the Mathsaurus website in the GCSE section, I've gone through the uh, process for actually factorizing uh, quadratics in the different cases in the monic case, where you've got, and that means where you've got 1x squared, 
um, and the non-monic case that where you've got 3x squared or 10x squared or something, um, which will be the step that brings you to factorising, right? So a full question might be something like this. I have x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, and then I've got to do a method that you can learn about elsewhere to find that that's equivalent to x plus 2 times x plus 3 is 0, and then finally I say that x is minus 2 or x is minus 3 using the logic here. Right? But my point in this video is that if you, okay, once you get good at this step, you don't have to think about it every time for easy linear factors, right? You can, of course, you can still, when you've got a nice linear factor, just jump to the fact that it's minus 2 or minus 3 if you want to. Um, but uh, never forget what the logic is that underlies it, because it will help you not get lost in more difficult situations. So I hope that was useful. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the Mathsaurus website uh, and the Amazon store uh, and everything else over there. Um, I've also recently made a Discord server. Uh, there's people, there's a lot of GCSE students over there and also a load of A-level students helping out GCSE students. Um, so come and join us over there uh, if, you, uh, if you want to. Um, it's free to just uh, to, to get involved over there. There's some extra benefits if you want to support the channel on Patreon as well, but you can get involved in the basic way uh, without paying anything at all. So I hope to see you over there and I'll see you in the next video.